What is up you guys? Hope you're having an awesome day. I'm your host Eamon Hassan and welcome back to another video. Okay, if I'm gonna be 100% honest and real with you guys, I did not like watching Barney growing up. Not that there was anything wrong with the show, it just personally bored me. I was always waiting for Lizzie McGuire or even Stevens to come on after, which meant I'd have to sit through Barney, which in hindsight was a very first world problem. Can you just imagine 10 year old me complaining that I have to sit through Barney to watch another show? lol anyway you guys liked part one so much so here i am with part two these are the top 10 scary barney theories part two starting us off with number 10 is 666 in the 2001 book titled science askew it claims that barney actually contained a chronogram of the number of the beast 666 barney is most popularly described as a cute purple dinosaur however the book points out how the latin alphabet uses the letter v in place of the letter u thus making that sentence c v Cute purple dinosaur, obviously with V's instead of U's, and if you take out all the letters that don't represent any Roman numerals, you're legit left with C V V L D I V, and those numerals are 100, 5, 5, 50, 500, 1, and 5, and when you add all of them together, you get 666. So is Barney the Beast the Book of Revelation talks about and not the cute purple dinosaur people know and love? Possibly. I'm not ruling anything out, people. I'm just not gonna do it. Coming in at number nine is the reptilian conspiracy. The many conspiracy theorists believe that there is an alien reptilian race amongst humans and those people are able to disguise themselves as humans and that they've managed to get themselves to very important positions of power. Now, do I believe this? No. Is that outlandish? Yes. Now, having said that, this theory claims that the US government is in touch with aliens that are reptilian in nature and that they have corrupted people on Earth and are planning on taking over the world. These same people believe a show like Barney that shows reptiles in a positive light are just attempts by the government aliens to brainwash kids. Because I mean, most humans don't like reptiles. I mean, a lot of them do, but a lot of them don't. And I mean, he is a T-Rex, so technically he's not even a reptile. At number 8 we have pedophilia. So this one is dark, but given that Barney is a dinosaur that plays with a lot of kids, it was bound to show up eventually. His songs are always to do with loving the kids and kissing the kids, and he's usually just the only adult around. So obviously some skeptics see Barney as more of a pedophilic character. He's billions of years old, he loves the kids, one could argue too much, and based off a theory in part 1, he could have kidnapped these kids. Why else do they rarely ever get to see their parents? He wants to be their one and only. Filling on number seven slot is the bad influence. According to a user in a debate of whether or not Barney should be boycotted, the purple dinosaur is a menace and a bad influence. Minmax123 theorized that society has no idea how much harm the show has actually done. Barney and friends teach the children that you can do potentially harmful things and get away with it. In various episodes, kids on the show have been caught stealing, lying, cheating, catching dangerous insects, and more. And obviously, the impressionable audience of the show could easily easily think that doing that in real life is okay too. And I mean, they're not wrong. That is what the show is encouraging. Now at number six is all rainbows and butterflies. Now the show gained notoriety for being liked by any second grader you ask and for its over positive to the point of one dimensional episodes. The show is unhealthy and doesn't educate kids properly despite being marketed as an educational optimistic show. According to Ted Giannolis, Barney doesn't teach kids how to deal with any sort of negative emotions or feelings. The show just flat out denies the concept even exists. It doesn't recognize the existence of unpleasant realities. And I mean, yes, it does emphasize unconditional love, which is great. It also shows kids that society is one where everything has to be fixed at once and that everyone is always happy, which is not true from any angle. We have people out here beating each other up for bread, people. Trust no one. Coming in at number five are drugs part one. Now in part one of the series, we found out that one of the actors that played Barney was a drug addict that was found with coke stashed inside his costume. And I guess that inspired the train of drug related Barney incidents that followed. Back in 1988, a drug sniffing dog found two pounds of cocaine hidden inside a talking Barney doll in Texas. It was being shipped to Minnesota and so police officers went to the address and ended up arresting three people for drug dealing. Three years later, four members of a family in Charleston were arrested and pled guilty to conspiring to sell cocaine as well as other drugs after they were all found in another Barney doll. I'm guessing they were thinking, hey, if the big purple dinosaur does it, why can't I? I 
and no, those weren't even the worst stories. There are more. At number four, a drugs part two. Get ready for the monstrosity that is this story. Back in 2004, in Portucket, Rhode Island, police officers found $2,000 stuffed inside a Barney doll. 13 grams of coke were also found inside another doll. More than 30 grams were found in a flower pot. And then they found weed in the dresser drawer. The apartment belonged to a family that included five children. And in a plot twist turn of events, it was their grandma and mum's boyfriend that ended up getting arrested and charged with possession and distribution. The kids were obviously taken from the family and went into the system. Oh, Barney, oh no, what is you doing? Filling on number three saw is Love Breeds Hate. I honestly have the ending song ingrained in my brain. I love you, you love me, we're a happy family with a great big hug and a kiss from me to you. Won't you say you love me too? I don't know why I had to do the whole thing. We could have just added a clip in, but you guys know I love my acapella covers. Well, according to many people, the song didn't breed love, it breeded hate. Does anyone remember seeing the really messed up version of the song as a kid or was it just me? It was like, I hate you, you you hate me, let's go out and kill Barney with a baseball bat and a 4x4, four four. no more purple dinosaur. See, I personally only sung up until the kill Barney part. The kids that went past that were just psychopaths. They are psychopaths today. Now, and number two is David Joyner part one. Now, usually not many people care about who's behind the mask or costume in the situation. And normally I'd be like, fair enough. But however, this mask needs to come off. Mask off. Mask off. <laughs> David Joyner played Barney for 10 years from 1991 to 2001. He claims that his family is full of people with psychic and clairvoyant abilities and that he had a dream about getting the role before he even auditioned. But that ability saved him and let him be Barney for a few more months. According to David, he had to attend an event in Boston days before 9-11 happened. His flight got delayed and so the airline gave him vouchers for his return trip, meaning he could decide which flight to go back on. He wanted to switch his flight from being on the 10th of September to being on the 11th, and the airline staff told them the United Airlines Flight 175 had open seating. With that information, he went to bed and woke up in the middle of the night with this feeling that a voice was speaking to him, telling him to keep his original flight. When the 11th did come around, David got a page from his manager telling him to turn his TV on. And when he did, he saw that the second plane was about to crash into the Trade Center, and that was the United Airlines 175 flight. How eerie is that? And finally, at number one is David Joyner part two. After he stopped being Barney, he became a tantra massage specialist and spiritual healer, which I mean is great, do you? David charges $350 for a four hour session and weirdly enough only accepts female clients and refers to them all as goddesses. Getting a bit creepy now. Then I found out the sessions aren't just tantra massages, they're tantra massages that end in happy endings to keep it PG. He also admitted that he refused to ever wear protection since that blood blocks the energy. Tantra experts say that sex isn't even a necessary part of the practice. It's only about connecting with others, yourself, and nature. So David, what are you even doing? And that is it for today's video, guys. I still don't like Barney. Do you guys like Barney still? I don't. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments below. As always, I'm your host, Eamon Hassan, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.